On today's episode, we're going to be talking about what it really means to be poor in spirit on Soul Zero Two. And welcome to Soul Zero Two. This is a podcast that is putting the oxygen back into the Christian life one soul at a time. So glad to be with you today. And we've been doing this series that, that's based on one that I did at our church. That one was a little more extensive, so I'm keeping them real short for the podcast, but I'm, I'm trying to pack them with as much depth as I can at the same time while keeping them efficiently short. So today we're going to be talking about what it means to be poor in spirit. Because again, when, when we think about meekness and poverty of spirit, I believe that many people have the wrong idea of what all of that means. And we've been saying that the Beatitudes are part of the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gave, and they, they show eight marks of a follower of Christ. In other words, if you're really a follower of Christ, you're going to be living these to, to some extent. And living the Beatitudes does not make one a Christian, like we said last time, but rather it shows that one is a Christian and that their life is slowly orienting itself towards them because if Christ is in them, you can't help but to to manifest the image that is in you of God. And the Beatitudes are Jesus' manifesto declaring his intentions and expectations and vision for his kingdom. And we've been kind of saying that all along. And so today we're going to, again, apply the opposite lens, I call it. And the opposite lens are you know, the idea that the Beatitudes must be read through a lens that says that the opposite of what the world thinks is true is actually true. And the culture of Jesus is so radical, so other than the world, that it is counterintuitive to our natural thinking. That's why, you know, we we think about retaliation when, when we're hurt. And we think about not showing mercy when when uh when when people you know when we think it's it's their fault and they should have just done something, right? And, and I mean, and I'm saying not in every case, but in many cases, the world can be very cold-hearted. And so, but let, let, let's look at the opposite is true idea, right? And he, here's, the, here's again Jesus saying this here. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we find here the, the first beatitude of what Jesus says. And what does it mean to be poor in spirit? And before we can find out what it means, let's maybe talk about what it doesn't mean. And being poor in the spirit does not mean this. It does not mean uh, lack of material things. Uh, being poor in the spirit is not about having or not having stuff. In fact, some of the the old monks in the you know during the uh, in the uh, Middle Ages and Dark Ages, uh, some of their orders had this idea that if you're poor. If, you, if you're going to be a monk, if you're going to serve God, you have to be poor because being poor is, is a sign that, hey, you know, not having stuff is a sign that, that I'm, I'm spiritual, right? That I know God. But that's not really the case when you think about it. A person can have everything and yet be poor. A person can have nothing and yet be rich. So it's not about stuff or owning stuff. So that naturally leads to this one that, and I, I uh, missed my point there, but there it is. Here's a second one. Um, it's not proof of spirituality. The more poor you are, the more spiritual you are. Monks took this vow of poverty uh, and during medieval times, and it was very common for a, for a monk to take a this vow of poverty. And this was seen as a sign of deep spiritual commitment to God. That if you take a vow of poverty, that you're not going to own anything. You're just going to have like a little sparse little room and just barely exist. You are spiritual. And we find that nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that being poor is a sign of spirituality. In fact, the opposite is usually true. In the, in the book of Deuteronomy, for instance, and other places, poverty was seen as the opposite of flourishing, right? Makairos, flourishing and blessing. That God's hand was not on you. That if, if you were poor, it meant you were under judgment. Or if you were poor, it meant that you weren't obeying God's law. And so he was bringing you know, another nation to take take your stuff. And I'm finishing Jeremiah, so this is what I'm reading right now. Um, but neither is it this. Poverty of spirit is not low self-esteem. And low self-esteem deals with viewing yourself in a wrong, unhealthy way 
And being poor in spirit deals with viewing yourself in a right and realistic way. That's the difference. That when you're poor in spirit, it doesn't mean that you're down and depressed and, and you think you're a loser. No, no, no. It means that you're seeing yourself the way God sees you in a realistic way, that you're not too haughty or proud. You don't think more of yourself than you are. And you don't think too much of or too little of yourself. So that said, if, if that's the case, right, then, then what in the world does being poor in spirit mean? You know, what does it mean to be poor in spirit? Well, it means first this. It means a keen awareness of how needy you are without God. That's what it means to be poor in spirit. Charles Quarles, theologian, wrote a great, just goes some great stuff on this. He said, Poor in spirit describes someone who is keenly aware that he or she is spiritually destitute and must rely entirely on the grace of God for salvation. And this is what, what the essence of what being poor in spirit is. We can define our richness by the things we possess, right? Or by the things we have. We can say, well, I have more than you. I have a car. We can rely on our birth, our status in life, our possessions, our bank accounts, our positions, our talents, our looks, our know-how, our personalities, and yet we can be poor in spirit. But blessed are those who are not possessed by their possessions, says Fulton, Jean, Fulton Sheen. He was a great uh, bishop, Catholic bishop. He said, blessed are those who are not possessed by their possessions or anything else in the world, but they are possessed by their need for God and nothing else. And so we find that great leaders in the Bible saw themselves in this way. And there are so many that I, I only give you a few, or I'm, I'm only giving a few today, but there are many great leaders in the Bible who saw themselves as very poor in spirit. And one of the most famous ones was Gideon. And Gideon um, was, was someone who... Uh, God says, I want, you to, I want you to deliver Israel. And in the face of, of Israel being living in such defeat in Judges 6, 15, he says, how can I deliver Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Then you have Moses. Moses in Numbers 3. And I don't have the verse there. Sorry about that. But it says, now the man Moses was very humble, more so than anyone else on the face of the earth. So, I mean, that's quite a quite a thing for someone to say that about about anyone right then david david looked at it this way david told god in in second samuel 7:18 who am i o lord that and what is my house that i that you have brought me thus far in other words god made him king and and prospered him so david is is he's showing his true balance of of uh he's he's showing the true balance of 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 not being per, too proud there right and then we have uh, Isaiah in God's presence. He said this, Woe is me, I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And there's a lot more, but I'll just give you a couple more. Peter, when he saw Christ in Luke 5, 8, he said, it says he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Paul, when looking at at all of his success, he said this, yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. Then, of course, Jesus showed, showed poverty of spirit, even the Son of God, right? When he says, I can do nothing, I can do nothing on my own. This is what I mean by poverty of spirit. It doesn't mean you can't do anything that you can't have talents, that you can't compete, that you can't do these things, but that you realize where that comes from. It doesn't just come from you. You didn't create yourself, right? These all show a deep need for God, not just as an insurance policy when we have problems, right? Or 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 insurance against, you know, God's judgment or eternal damnation, right? But that without God at every moment of our lives, we are lost. And so being poor in the spirit, in a sense, is a paradox. And a, a paradox is kind of like a conundrum. It's like, okay, it's it's like, what is this, right? A paradox. And in other words, there's this pro profound reversal that happens. And John Stott put it beautifully, beautifully when he said this. 
he said, um, the kingdom is given to the poor, not the rich, and the feeble, not, not, not the mighty, to little children humble enough to accept it, not to soldiers who boast that they can obtain it by their own prowess. God gives a kingdom always to, to those who are poor in spirit, not to those who are mighty in spirit, in their own strength, I mean. And we find the value of things becoming reversed in Jesus' Beatitudes. Regardless of how affluent and, and important someone is, their riches, their power, their influence has no value in God's kingdom. What has value is that they recognize their need for God and how that all things come from Him, their Creator. This is one of the wonders of grace. Again, Charles Quarles puts it, puts it this way, the spiritually destitute, those who had no apparent claim to the kingdom, would be the very ones to possess it. What an irony. And so I want to close with this question. Where does God like to hang out? Where does God like to hang out? If, if you were to spend, if God were to come down to earth and spend time with a group of people on earth, right? Who, who would he go to first? Would it be the rich and famous? Would it be those who built great companies like Amazon, you know, presidents of companies and established incredible visions? Here's where, according to the scriptures, where God would go, where he's attracted to most. And it is this, Isaiah 57, 15. For thus says the high and, and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. What an encouraging verse when you think about it, that God would do that for you and, and I, uh, that he he's attracted to people who are poor in spirit, who are just down and just saying, look, I'm just down here, Lord. I don't need to be a big shot, you know. So poverty of spirit is a starting point, right? And the starting point is is the idea that that um, that that when we that it's it's at the head of the all all the beatitudes. We must know how how attainable um, any of the beatitudes. We can't know the other beatitudes without being poor in spirit, without knowing where we are, where we stand, and and how only God's grace can help us to do it. As, as we said previously, the Beatitudes aren't just a rule book of you do these things and you're a Christian. No, it will take everything in you surrendering to God to embody these things God is calling you to do. And you can't fill something that is already full. It must be emptied for it to be filled by God. So, are you aware of your own spiritual poverty? And again, there's another scripture in Revelation that says, For I say... For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I, I need nothing. <clears throat> you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. And God is speaking to one of his churches there who had become, who, had, who lost perspective of, of who they were in proximity, in proximity to God. And they were kind of saying, I'm all that. You know, we're all that. We're rich. We're set. We don't need anything. And God says, man, if you say that, you are really, really poor. And so we put the question out to you today as we close. How do you see yourself relative to God? Do you see yourself way up here that you can just do all these things without His power and grace and presence? Or do you realize that you are really poor in spirit? Do you have the right view of yourself? So check out our podcast on soul02.com. There you'll find audios and you'll find videos on our YouTube channel. And check us out. We have articles there. And give us a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It would be great to hear from you. So until next time, thanks so much for being with us. God bless you.